RubyMotion is a revolutionary toolchain that will let you write full-fledged native iOS apps in Ruby. With RubyMotion, you will need three things to write your application. Your terminal, your favorite editor, and Ruby. We want developers to be able to use the tools they already know and love. RubyMotion is based on iOS. It implements Ruby on top of the Objective-C runtime and the iOS Foundation classes. Thanks to this tight integration, RubyMotion apps can call into the entire set of iOS APIs at no performance expense. RubyMotion apps use the exact same machinery as Objective-C apps. RubyMotion apps are statically built into super-fast native code using a revolutionary state-of-the-art static compiler. The original source code is never present in an app and typically weighs less than a megabyte. RubyMotion projects are based on Rake, Ruby's de facto build system. With just one command, you get your app built and deployed on the simulator, your iPhone or iPad tethered to your computer, or generate an application archive suitable to deliver into the App Store when you're ready to release. Now let's go into a little bit more detail on RubyMotion. RubyMotion can be purchased at rubymotion.com. Once acquired, just run the installer in order to set up the project. You will need to install the iOS SDK. If you don't have it already, you can follow the steps on Getting Started Guide, and you'll find it in the RubyMotion Development Center. RubyMotion's projects are created from the command line. Let's create a new one. We'll make a timer app. You notice here that a few files are created when you create an app. The app directory and the app delegate inside of it are where you will place your Ruby files. The resources directory are where you will place images and other resources you want to use within your app. The spec directory is used for tests. Let's go into the app and run it. Notice here that I just run Rake. The app is compiled and launched on the simulator. It doesn't do anything yet but display a blank window. That's because we haven't added any code yet. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll start up TextMate. Now that TextMate is running, I can see the directory of files. Let's look in the app directory at the generated app delegate. It doesn't do anything but return true right now. I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code for the app delegate. This code creates a window, sets the root view controller to a timer controller, which we'll create in just a moment says that it wants the full screen layout and makes itself visible. Let's go ahead and save this file. Now let's create the controller. This is just an empty file. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and paste the code that I've already created for this controller. So there's the code I want to paste. Now let's go back and run this code. Go back to the command line, and I type rake. The files are compiled, and it starts up. Well, here's my app. We'll talk a little bit in a moment about the actual code in the app. But for right now, the one thing I want you to notice is that the tap to start text is up in the top of the screen. That really doesn't look very good. What I can do with RubyMotion is I can actually use the command key on my keyboard and as I move over different elements of the screen you'll notice that in the REPL I can see the different elements that I'm selecting. If I click on one, like this label, click, it becomes self. I'm on the label. I can inspect the attributes of the label. What I want to do is position the label.
let's see. I really need to move it over a little bit, so I'm going to move it over. And uh, let's set it at um, 150 pixels down. I know the width of this is 280 pixels, and I know the height is 40. So let's go ahead and move it. Well, that's getting closer. I think I'd actually want to move it down a little bit more. You notice there I was using the up arrow to actually recall the last line. Ah, that looks good. Now let's see what this app does. If I hit start, it starts a timer. If I hit stop, it stops it. Starts it up again, stops it. Excellent. Let's go back to the code and actually copy this value and place it in our code. Let's see. It's right here. Just paste those values in. Got an extra array in there. All right. Save that. Go back to the command line. Run it again. See if that looks right. Perfect. Exit out. Another thing that happens from time to time in your code is that you'll get an exception. When I look at this code, I see that my timer controller subclasses the UI view controller. Ruby Motion is based on Ruby 1.9, and you get all of the aspects of Ruby that you've grown to love, such as your adder readers and accessors. Here I've defined some methods, view did load. When I load the methods, I set a margin and instance variable, and I call a couple of setup methods down here that are down at the bottom of my class. The one to create the label that we edited before, and the one to create a button. What happens if we actually have a typo in our co code and I called create labels instead of create label? Let's go run it again and see what happens. The code runs compiles and runs, and I get the exception. So as you see, I can build the app. I can do a clean, which cleans out anything that had happened before. I can do a rake device. This will actually push the application onto the phone itself instead of the simulator. Let's try that. It's building the app just like it did before, building the archive file, and it's done. And if I were to look on my phone, I would see that the timer app is there. I can run it, and I am running it, on my phone, just as I did on the simulator. It's that easy. Congratulations! You have built your first iOS application with Ruby. Ruby Motion is a revolutionary tool chain for iOS development. Thanks to Ruby, writing iOS apps is now much simpler than it has ever been. You get to use a very nice language, your favorite text editor, and you have access to a powerful interactive console where you can try things out in real time. You can get more information about Ruby Motion at rubymotion.com. Thanks for watching.